Hey folks, it's Zion Prepper here and in, well let's pretend we're in an SHTF and the first thing according to the survival triangle, remember heat, shelter, water, food, and self-preservation that you establish, my argument has always been is fire. Even in the uh, Philippines when they had the recent typhoon, fire would have been a, would have been a great resource because they could have boiled water, uh, which many of them didn't think. They could have used it to signal for help. There were many wounded and they could have used it to cauterize wounds. Uh, there are a number of reasons why you want fire. In our scenario, we have a fire. The number two thing we need to do is establish water. So as you can see, we have the water right in front of us. And let's just pretend we found it in a lake or a stream somewhere. And what we need to do is we need to boil it because boiling will kill the Giardia and will kill the uh, Cryptosporidium. Now, we're going to do two things. The one on the left there is full. There's absolutely no air in it. The one on the right has air in it, and you can see that, right? It's about halfway full. And we're going to throw those directly on the fire. And, you know, uh, you read, well, you can throw it directly on the fire and the bottle won't melt. And the whole idea is because the temperature inside the bottle is cooler than the fire. And until the two temperatures are the same, the bottle won't uh, physically melt. So we're going to test that principle. and. The other pair of bottles we have here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hang those over the fire. We're gonna leave the cap on one, get it to boil, and then take the cap off of the other to see which boils quicker. The reason I'm doing this is because it's important that when you're in a SHTF that you have some experience of how all this works. That is not the time to be trying this. So if we can you know, get these little experiments to work, you'll have an idea that maybe you can go in your backyard, give it a shot, and uh, see how it works for you, but at least try it for once. There's a primitive tripod. I just found some, some little limbs in the backyard and just took some paracord, about two seconds, or took me about two, three minutes to put it together, okay? Now remember, my saying is, um, I've always said it, that if you don't have an experience, it's an experience you know you need, so you go ahead and do it. So we're going to go ahead and do this, and uh, I'll turn the camera right back on. Okay, there's experiment one. Yeah, they're not the same height, um, but given that much heat, it shouldn't be a big difference. And you just want them barely above the fire, above the heat. And uh, I'm not going to bore you with the details of me sitting here and watching this, so we'll just kind of get an idea, and we'll see which one boils first. Okay. okay. The second one somebody told me was you could take a full bottle of water with absolutely no air in it, which you can see the cap, a little air but not a whole lot, and throw it on the fire and it'll boil and the bottle won't melt. So hey, there you go. We're taking their advice. Okay. Okay, I've added the second bottle and you can see it's melting already. So even with the lid on that would have melted. So that's not a good idea, right? I'm going to before it. So it's not a good idea. You can see how the bottom is cold. See how the water is cold? That won't melt because of the temperature difference. And the top, it's air. Air is going to heat up real quick. Pretty soon that air is going to be hotter than the flame, and that's why it melts. Okay, so hey, oops, sorry. Experiment number four. Never place a bottle half full with water directly on a fire. All right, if you look on the left there, the bottle still has it. And once again, that's because the temperature in the bottle is colder than the fire. Once the water starts to heat up, and especially if it gets hotter than the flame, then it would melt. All right. You can begin to see on the top, if you look real hard, the water is beginning to seep out of that top cap. Not a big deal yet, but overall you can see the bottle, there's no melting. It's directly on the flame. Okay, we can see on that top one, it's sprung a leak. It's going to get the fire put the fire out. The reason is that that cap is there's no seal and anytime there's no seal air can get in. Anytime air can get in that's gonna happen so let me take it out. Okay what have we learned so far? Do not place water bottles directly in a fire uh, especially with a, a cap on or only half filled because they'll melt. Um, what you could do I mean here are blocks. I have cinder blocks um, in mind. You could set them on a warm rock like this and let them slowly heat up and take a little bit longer. But it's looking like we probably want to hang it down slightly over the fire so we're not actually burning the plastic. You can see this one is beginning to boil. 
You can see the steam starting to build up. Ah, but let's look at the other one. No steam so far. And why is that? Well, obviously the cap is on it. The steam has nowhere to escape. So will that one boil? Let's find out. Just a quick note here. You can see the one with the top. Look what's happening to the bottom. See how it's bulging out? That's because of the pressure, right? So that pressure is causing it to bulge out, whereas the one that's above, it's a little higher above the flames, but it has no lid, is not bulging out. Okay, as we're going on, you can definitely see, you know, this is interesting. Look at the one with the cap on. You can look at the bottom and compare it to the one on the left, which is without the cap, right? Now, the one on the right is building up substantially more pressure. Why? Because as that water evaporates, it hits the lid, it has no place to go down. And you can see, because of that, the structural integrity of the bottle is being compromised. In other words, you could probably only boil water in that bottle one time. It's like a pressure cooker, right? When you use a pressure cooker, you put water in it, you put the lid on it, it heats up quicker, and it also gets hotter because it's under pressure. So that's what's happening there. So that's not a good way to go. The one on the left, you can see we're almost to boil. The lid is off. You don't see the bottle deforming. You know, we, sh we showed you the bottom. But as you go up and you look at the top, you don't see that deformation. It's not deforming. Um, in that bottle you could probably use multiple times in a survival situation or you know if you had to drink lake water uh, as long as you keep it up above the flame and you're patient you have to be patient it takes time to boil the water we want it to boil for at least two minutes um, and once again what do we learn to this I'm not gonna let it boil because we know it'll work the fact is if somebody tells you something and you question it go out and do it yourself that's the only way to get really 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 true experience and know for yourself in a survival situation shtf or significant life altering event as always i appreciate you uh, taking time to watch this video thanks